Hey everyone, uh, here's a quick video about how you can use my uh, letterpress creator template that I made for Adobe Illustrator. It's kind of a closer look at some different uh, controls you have uh, and kind of an overall look at the workflow uh, that I use to get this letterpress effect. So the first thing you want to do is uh, download that folder from Creative Market, unzip it, and inside you'll find a couple of files. Uh, one of them is an Illustrator uh, file. It's kind of the template. It's what you're going to want to do all the uh, letterpress effects inside. So just launch Illustrator and then uh, open up that template. Here we go. So here's the uh, Creator template. Open that up. And it's just like a blank artboard, but it has some styles uh, and some swatches that are really important for this effect. Um, and then uh, you're going to need the actions. So go to Window and open up the Actions pane. Now you'll usually see some stuff in here. Um, it's better and easier if you kind of declutter it by just clearing the actions so it's empty. And then load the ones that you downloaded here. There you go. So in that folder again, uh, you'll see the Letterpress Pro V2 Actions. Open that up. It'll take a second to load. There. and. Uh, I like to use them in button mode, so they look like this. And I color-coded them so they're easy to see where they go here. Um, so the first thing, well, it, you don't really want to make a project inside this template, okay? It's um, because some of the scripts clear everything on the artboard, and it'll just mess with you and make it crazy. So always work from a different... Uh, a different uh, file. So I've got another project going here, vector project. There we go. So get rid of that guy. Um, so this is a uh, was some uh, typeface text that I uh, outlined using the object expand. Uh, my uh, letterpress creator thingy it doesn't really work with live text, so you gotta outline it. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here. Let's scale it up. There we go. It, the artboard here is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. It needs to be that big because the way Illustrator renders these shadows and stuff, uh, they'll look much better rendered on a larger scale. Um, so once that shape is scaled up to fit the artboard a little better, uh, you want to prepare that shape. This is going to this is a script that prevents some glitches possibly occurring uh, later on. So it'll, it's real quick, it'll deselect it when it's done. Um, and then you can choose which depth of letterpress effect that you want. I like the medium one. Uh, and it's a pretty complicated script. It takes maybe a minute to run or whatever. Uh, it's got a lot of shadows and gradients to render. Um, and when it's done, it'll deselect it. So don't mess with it until it's done. <laughs> there you go, it's done. Now, if, you're, if you just want this flat sort of letterpress effect, that's cool. Just finish it and clean it up there, uh, and you can rasterize the gradients to speed it up and just copy it and paste it into your project. But this uh, system offers a kind of texturizer engine uh, that's fully vector, uh, and that's what these yellow buttons here are for. So I like the watercolor paper texture, so I just click that. Uh, I can use these purple tools to just affect the textures. So I can scale that texture up a little bit, I can shrink it, I can rotate it, and I can even duplicate it. Um, so I like this watercolor effect right now. I like watercolor too when it has those kind of vertical lines. So I'll add this linen texture. Uh, right now it's really fine. Uh, so I'm going to scale it up. Uh, that looks good. And uh, the opacity is at 10%. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, roll it down a bit. I think that's a pretty cool looking effect. It looks like paper, pretty realistic. So once you're happy with everything, uh, use this finish and clean up tool. Um, and that's going to make it it does some stuff that makes it easier to change the color later on. Um, so it'll deselect it when it's done. Uh, now, it still has all these live gradients and shadows, and if you move it around the artboard, 
it's freaking slow because every time you do anything to it, it's got to re-render it, uh, which is a pain. So I created this uh, rasterize gradients tool. Um, what it does is it just it doesn't rasterize the patterns or anything else. It just finds the three or four shadows that that's used here, and it rasterizes those that are really high resolution. Um, so it's like um, uh, you really won't run into problems with this unless you're displaying uh, your uh, rasterized project at like thousands of pixels wide. Like if it's smaller than uh, I don't know two thousand pixels, you seriously don't need to use live gradients. Uh, rasterize those gradients, and you won't even notice it. So when it's done, it'll deselect it, and it's still vector. The shapes are still vector, it's just the shadows. So uh, if you want to change the color, you can just uh, isolate, it's grouped together. So just isolate the group or go into that group. Uh, and you still have, you know, your original shape there. And you can change the color of that however you want. Um, this video isn't really high resolution, so if I use like a really light color, you can see the texture really well. But if I use a dark color, you can't see like the texture at all. Uh, that's just the video. Like in reality, uh, you can still see the texture clearly. Just how the video compresses it, it doesn't really see that as enough of a difference. But on my uh, screen, I can see it just fine. So, let's see. I really like this kind of greenish color. That's nice. So double click to get out of that uh, isolate group view, and then you're back here. It's pretty fast. You can scale it, uh, and it's just instant because it doesn't have to re-render all those shadows they're all rasterized so I'm going to copy it paste it back into my original project paste now it's big uh, because I scaled it up to fit on the uh, creator template so I'm just gonna scale that back down where I want it just like that God, that looks pretty good actually and uh, if you want you can use the letterpress creator template to make like paper textures too so I've already got that started with this uh, rectangle here um, well, let me show you what's it, what it's got here so it has this kind of shadow around the outside of it I did that by adding an outer glow you can find that in effect stylize outer glow now it makes a good sort of realistic 3D kind of jumping off the artboard look. I really like it. So I've already applied it, so in the appearance panel I can uh, sort of edit edit that. So I've got it set up at multiply in the transparency mode. That's important. The color has got to be set to black. Uh, usually it's defaulted to white, which is dumb. I don't know why. Um, the opacity looks good at 30% and at my artboard size, at my project size, uh, the blur is about four and a half points. Uh, this basically means uh, the distance that the shadow goes. Uh, so I'm happy with that. So okay, there we go. So if I want to add a paper texture to it, I'm just going to copy it, copy, uh, paste it into my uh, letterpress template here. There we go. So. In order to make the paper texture, you can use any of the yellow tools and any of the purple tools. Don't use the green ones or the red ones. They don't work for this. Uh, so I'll add the watercolor paper texture. It'll take a second. There we go. Uh, I can grow it. I can shrink it. Uh, I think that for a really realistic looking paper texture, I like to lower the opacity like 4%. Um, rotate it so it's kinda you know at an angle duplicate it and then rotate that one a few times and I don't know why but this gives enough kind of uh, uh, different highlights uh, that it looks super super realistic there we go and then also actually I love this I really love the linen texture um, so I'll grow that actual watercolor paper sometimes has this linen texture effect 
So it's a little strong right now, so I'm going to lower the opacity way, way down. There, that looks, that looks pretty realistic. So I'm going to select it. There's like lots of actually different shapes stacked on top of each other, so you can't tell, but just select them all and then group them. So now it'll move as one. So uh, copy that and then uh, paste it back into your project here. There we go. I'll get rid of the original one. I don't want that one anymore. Uh, and there you go. That's how you get a nice vector paper texture there. Um, I can lower the opacity there. Actually, it'll look nicer. About 80%. That's good. There you go. And uh, again, um, on my uh, website or on uh, Creative Market, you can actually see uh, some higher resolution pictures. So hopefully that explains my uh, letterpress creator kind of system. Uh, if you got any questions, send me an email. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for watching.